Okay, uh, science time. Surfer science time, because I dress like a surfer. I just want to explain for the sake of the video that this is homecoming weekend. This is not. This is how I normally dress. But this is, and I do have tattoos in real life. But this is not how I normally dress at school. I have, this is my job, guys. I am very serious about this. This is very important to me, and I take it very seriously. We're talking about forces and motion. Forces and motion. I guess we're going to write this in Burgundy today to celebrate Surfer Day, you know, classic Surfer color Burgundy. Can you see it okay on the video? And is this still, okay, yeah, good. I also have a contract to make everything more difficult. <clears throat> What's a force? There's a definition in your book or your explorations or whatever, but I want to hear what you think. What is a force? Okay, yeah, and that's what it says in the explanations too. But is and that's um, you think that's a great definition? What do you think, Wes? What let's? Say something onto an okay, so something that a push. Or okay, or okay, a push or a pull, and I like that you included may change motion. Push or a pull, semicolon may change motion. Um, Wes had some, said a thing exerted in an object exerted very common verb that we use with a force is that it was exerted. It may change or yes. And and think you know and obviously we haven't gotten here in the school year yet, but you probably remember from your previous science classes, what is everything made out of? Is every everything's made out of atoms. atoms which themselves, if you think of the atoms as individual objects, instead of like you know, you have I, sh I saw a TikTok about a sugar ball. Are you guys aware of this thing, the sugar ball? Nope. Okay. More popular because it comes up on TikTok a lot. But if you had, so it's a little like a little squishy ball, um, and it looks like this. <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always burgundy in color, but it looks like that. And if you poke it, it does. It, your finger goes into it, and it makes a little finger hole. Um, but if you think of the fact that the sugar ball is made out of atoms, those atoms that were here moved, didn't they? There was motion. So even if we think of the sh motion or shape changing, it was still really motion on a at least atomic level. Atomic level. This is great. Um, a good example probably, back. but what? I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, said the wrong word too. If you look up sugar ball gross or inappropriate. Pretend I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> comments are disabled for this video. Uh, but re refer to motion, which we have here twice. What is what is motion then? Movement. Movement, yeah. God bless you. Movement, that's not difficult. But something extremely important here is that it may change. In fact, a lot of science is about this idea of change. A lot of science in fact, in some ways, I might even say that most or even all of science is concerned with change. <clears throat> change is one of the fundamental attributes that we talk about in science. So one of the fundamental attributes of the universe that we talk about in science. And we're talking here about a change in motion. Can anyone think of a, this is pretty concise, but can anyone think of a more concise, maybe even vocab word that is defined as a change? In the word in motion. There is one, so just run through the vocab words in your head. A change in motion. Defined as a change in motion. No? This is can cause a change in motion. No? Velocity is a way to. There we go. Acceleration. Please write that down. Acceleration is change in motion. One way that we mathematically describe motion, math, this little squiggly line represents math, one way that we mathematically describe motion is velocity, which is made up of, I'm going to do this differently, made up of speed, you know about speed, not math. Me another, the street name, one of the street names for meth is I, speed. We're not talking I about that. Um, the, we're not talking about that. We're talking about speed. Normally understand it. Like the speed of, the speed limit. 65 miles per hour on the highway. Speed limit. You know what speed is. 
And it's also the uh, direction. Velocity must have a direction component. So if we say that the, the giraffe was moving 13 miles per hour, or if we say the giraffe was moving 20 meters a second, that's a speed. But if we say it was moving 20 meters a second east, that's now a velocity because it's speed and direction. Okay, so let's draw a giraffe. This is a very important part of our learning, and it has to get into this box up here. Here's its little eyes. They actually have knobby horns. Some of them even have a knobby in the middle of their head. Something called the reticulated giraffe has these um, net shapes all over it. I'm going to draw that it's moving. There we go. So it's, it has a velocity. We'll say 13. I was going to say 30 miles per hour. Let's say it has a velocity of 20. That's a lot. That's really fast. Let's say it has a velocity of 5 meters per second. In what way, though? 5 meters per second is a speed. How do I make it with this, using this diagram? Yeah, well, you say east, I'm going to say right, because this is actually, I mean, in reality, this is west. Um, but on the board, he's going right. And right is a direction, isn't it? What are the directions? Let's, let's just break that down real quick. What are some ways we can describe direction? There's a little concept map up here. What are some different ways we can describe direction? Forward. Forward, that's definitely true. Forward, back. Right. Left, north, south, east, west, up, down. I think that pretty much covers everything. Yeah, there are some though, some pretty pretty vague ones that I wouldn't even count as directions, but like, and the, crooked is not a direction. Um, <coughs> these are all different directions. And if we're describing the direction of this draft as moving five, that's a velocity. Well, how could that velocity change? If we're talking about change in motion, how could that motion, which we've described mathematically as five meters per second right, how could that change? Let's list the ways that that could change. Yeah, I don't mean like how could it physically change, but how could the motion change? It could, and you, if he did that, it would do what? How the motion would change if he stopped moving his legs, the motion would do what? Slow. Slow. That is decrease what? If it's slowing down, it's decreasing speed. speed. Is speed part of velocity? Yeah. yeah. How else can it change? Yeah, okay, we're going to talk about that in a second, but that's not what I'm getting at. What other ways could it change? I don't mean what physically could happen. I don't mean what could cause a change in motion. I mean, what other ways could the motion change? Speed up. Speed up. I'm going to say that stopping, like the process of stopping, is slowing down. So we're going to count that as one. Um, speed up, which would be a what? Out of our two things that make a velocity, what is? It? how would we describe that now? Yeah, an increase in speed. What else could it do to change its motion, to change how we would describe its motion? Okay, once again, I'm not looking for ways, methods by which it could do it, but how could the motion itself change? If he were to, for instance, start flying, what would be changing? Direction. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Change in direction. Any change in direction. Can it be a combination of these? Well, it probably can't be a combination of slowing down and speeding up. But it could be slowing down and changing direction. It could be speeding up and changing direction. Or it could be just one of any change in motion. Then are what? How would we just well, the, the is change in velocity. Change in motion. Yeah, which is acceleration. Those are the things that can accelerate. Wait a second. When you're some state troop that the perpetrator or the steer accelerated, what do they mean? They they mean specifically what? That it did what? Not necessarily ran away, but but what? Which of these do they mean specifically? Probably, if they say speed. they meant speed up. In fact, if it slowed down, they might even say what instead? A fake word. Yeah. yeah, but they might say if they said if to them accelerating is speeding up, they might say that it. Have you, have you ever heard the word decelerate? 
real word. You can find it in the dictionary, but that's not a real science word. We don't use that in physics because both of these are actually acceleration. Both of these are changes in motion, which is acceleration. There's no um, distinct idea of deceleration in physics because both in lay speech, that means in people, in the way that people normally speak, accelerate generally means to speed up and decelerate means to slow down. But in physics, both of these are kinds of acceleration. Also, change in direction is a kind of acceleration. So if these are the way an object can accelerate, what two states can an object be in where it's not acceleration? Where, sorry, no, 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 hold on. I'm not looking for specific or physical examples. I'm looking for what states can the motion be in? Stopped, yeah, still, no motion. No motion is one. What would be another one, though, counterintuitively? How could it be not slowing down, not speeding up, and not changing direction, but not staying the still? Yeah. It's moving in a straight line at a constant speed is not accelerating. Oh, a real good test for this that you can think of in your is... Uh, what does it feel if you're in a car because she has to because you can't drive because you're little losers um, but if your mommy's driving you around can you feel when she slows down like even imagine you have your eyes closed um, can, she, can you feel when she slows down yeah can you feel when she speeds up yeah can you feel when she changes direction yeah can you feel can you feel a change in motion when she stops if you're just sitting in the car and it stopped can you feel a change in motion no. Can you feel a change in motion if she's moving in a straight line and constantly like cruises set on the highway? Do you feel that change in motion? No. You feel it when she hits a bump, but that's a change in direction, isn't it? Even a very, very minor one. So these things, your body can feel acceleration. Um, these things, you can feel when they're happening, and you can feel when these aren't happening, and that's no acceleration. So the two ways an object is not accelerating are if it has no motion, completely stopped, or if it's moving in a straight line at a constant speed. And then, to tie it all together, causes this change in motion. Or what can, doesn't always, but what can cause this change in motion? A force. And not only that, but any change in motion has to be caused by a force. Oh, I really wanted to knock this down. That would have been good, but I don't want to have to clean it up. Am I putting a force on this whiteboard right now? Yes. Yeah, is it moving? Is it changing its motion? No. Is it changing its motion? No. Does that mean the force doesn't exist? No. no it just means that the forces are, we say, um, here's, here's me. I'm going to dress like a surfer, so I'm going to draw myself skinny, which is, I'm just pretending. Don't at me. Um, my hair looks like this today. I have a necklace on. Sandals. I am also wearing clothes. I guess if I'm drawing sandals, I should probably draw, but I'm wearing a shirt, too, and shorts. Um, I'm, this is me. I'm pushing on the whiteboard with a certain force. I'm going to draw the force in a different color. I'm going to draw that I'm pushing on the whiteboard with this force. Yeah, so what must be happening? The for There's another force here, isn't there? Me pushing is one force. What's, ha what's also happening? The wall's pushing me back. The force is pushing me back with the same exact amount of force. There's, there is no, what we say, net force. Have you ever heard this phrase or this uh, word net before? I don't mean in the same way that with the pattern on the giraffe was a net or like a fishing net. But if I say that you have a, a net paycheck, that means how much you made after taxes. Like you, you made twenty dollars. The government took two dollars, so you have a net of eighteen dollars. It's like net worth. Yeah, if you have, if you and your piggy bank have twenty dollars, but you owe Tommy Tiger five dollars for braiding your hair last weekend, you have a net worth of fifteen dollars. Net means with everything added and subtracted. So the net force here is none. I've added this force to the wall, but the wall has not quite subtracted, but the wall has added a force in the opposite direction of the same degree. We use, by the way, we use um, units like, let's say I'm pushing on with five newtons. The wall pushes back with five newtons. This is the unit newton, which is the unit we use for force. Write that down. I'm alarmed by how little some of you kids are writing this, of this down. But um, we, use the, we use the unit newton. We use the unit newton. Lucas, are you not writing anything? No. <sighs> You're going to really regret that. Um, uh, we use the force newton. To me or we use the unit newton to measure forces. If I push on the wall with five newtons, the wall pushes back with five newtons. There is no net force, and that means there is no change in motion, and that means there is no acceleration, and that means it either has to be stopped, no motion, or moving in a straight line at a constant speed. 
By the way, this refers to one of Newton's third uh, reaction, me pushing on the wall. There's an equal and opposite reaction. Do you remember which which of Newton's laws that is? Yeah. Newton law of three. Yeah, some of us, those of us who went to college, call it Newton's third law of motion. Newton's third law. But yeah, law of three. That's right. Um, Newton's third law, which is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I don't think that's actually in this exploration, so we'll probably um, get to that another time. But um, you can also, but what if there was a net force? What if I push and it does, I really want to push this over, but I'm not going to. Um, let me get this. What if I have, let's do it this way. See what's happening. Oh, look, it does go. Um, so now in that case, I'm really running out of room here. I'm going to have to erase draft. I'm going to use this little tissue to erase draft. Bye-bye. I'll leave its head up there. Um, now here's me again. What color was I using for my drawings? Um, here's me again. I'm just going to move my arm the other direction. Um, here's me again. Here's, gosh dang it, I really messed up this chair. Uh, <laughs> there's me again. There's the chair. This case, in this case, in this case, I'm going to have a net force because I'm pushing on the chair, we'll say, with a force of just to make it easy, we'll say I push with a force of 10 newtons, and let's say there's 5 newtons of friction. Well, now what's the net force? 5, five newtons. Which direction? You have to be very careful. You can't just point when you just say something. So the I don't like that. Forward, forward relative to me, but on the whiteboard left, yeah. 5 newtons left is the net force. So is there a change in motion? If there's a net force, is there a change in motion? Yeah. If there's a net force, there's a change in motion. And there's an acceleration, and so the object must either slow down, speed up, or change. Did it do one of those? Yep, yep, it did. It sped up. In some ways, you could think that it also changed direction. So net force means there must be a change in motion, which means there was acceleration, which means one of these happened. In the other example, no net force meant that there was no change in motion, no acceleration, and then one of these two things happened. It's kind of like a flow chart. Um, think if I missed anything. You could, this is some very basic math when we get down to it, but can you do these? Even if they're slightly harder, like what if it was one direction and 13 newtons the other direction? Could you still do that math? I really hope so. I really hope so. The kind of more classic example than uh, um, fat surfer pushing on a chair is that we have these two, uh, two cowboys pushing on a box from either side. There should be cowboys, yeah. They got little Arby's hats on, like cowboys do. And one's pushing with, let's say, 38 newtons of force. And the other one's pushing with, let's say, 14 newtons of force. Could you find the net force on this? And if there's, listen, this is the gist, and then we're going we're gonna to end it unless there are questions. Um, if there's any net force at all, if the net force is anything other than zero, then there is a change in motion. There must be. If the net force is zero, then there must not be a change in motion. And that's all there is to it. So anytime anything changes its motion, not moves, but changes its motion, a net force is acting on it. Look, look up there. There's a pickup going up that road. Do you see it? Is its motion changing? Yeah, it is. Its motion is changing. It's moving upward, up a hill. Must there be a net force acting on it? There must be. We're not going to talk about what that is for that pickup right now. It's the normal force. Um, but there must be a net force acting on it, or it can't change its motion. Does that make sense? Any change in motion means there's a net force. Any, any not change in motion means there's not a net force. Questions? Does that, do you, in your opinion, after you've done the explorations, does this kind of uh, help you, and does it cover everything that you wanted, that you had questions about while you're doing your explorations? Are there further questions about anything? I have a question. Why won't we take notes? Bye!